my name is Martin Petrosians, uh, uh, and my advisors are Professor Lord Maxfield and James, Dr. James Morland from Biomedical Department. So today I'm going to talk about uh, electrode deposition of aluminium high surface area in films uh, on top of microelectrodes used in uh, bionic eye or any type of uh, neurostimulating microelectrodes. So at the beginning, I'm going to give you some brief introduction of regarding entire uh, uh, the entire retinal prosthesis implant. So as you can see, the blind uh, wears a glass, which has a tiny camera mounted on that, and the camera captures the picture as you can see, and uh, there's a tiny coil inside of the camera uh, which works as a transmitter coil. Uh, the picture, once it's received, it is trans transmitted to the device which is implanted inside of the eye. So there is another coil which acts as a receiver. So as you can see, the picture is transmitted to, to the coil. And the main processor which is behind the coil uh, processes the data. So after uh, the data is processed, it is transferred to this microelectrode arrays through these leads, which is tacked to the retina behind of the eye. So after uh, the data is transmitted, this microelectrode array start to stimulate the, the, the retina through these ganglion cells. So you can see that this data are, are being stimulated to the, to the retina. Uh, and my, the focus of my project is uh, uh, on the material for surface modification of these microelectrodes. These are, each of the single microelectrodes are made of pure platinum and conventional biocompatible material. But uh, this material uh, has uh, two major weaknesses. It is too soft and uh, it has lower capabilities of transferring a uh, high uh, amount of electrical charges. So on this second video, which is pretty short, I'm going to demonstrate the importance of uh, the resolution. So at the beginning, we can't see, we can't recognize anything because of the low resolution of the picture and the large pixel size. Uh, the same concept works for the patient, for the, for the blind, uh, in order to the, for them to be able to recognize the face and be able to read and write. Uh, we need to increase the resolution by increasing the number of pixels. So as a result, we need to increase the number of microelectrodes. So we, as, as you can see, the number of pixels are being increased. So at the beginning of this video, we were not able to recognize anything. But by going, uh, by increasing the resolution and number of pixels, at the end we see that we can recognize a face. So this is the same concept for the patient. Uh, so simulation results predicts that at least 1,000 pixels are needed for the blind to, you know, able to, in order to be able to recognize the face and be able to read and write. So by knowing that uh, these are two pictures of uh, uh, retinal implants, the left side shows a real uh, implant in, into the patient's eye, uh, which has 16 electrodes, four by four. This is the first generation of the implant. And on the right side, which is an animal subject, uh, there's 1,000 microelectrodes, and this picture is in, still under uh, the research phase. Uh, current is pulsed to the to the retina, and uh, there's a time delay. So we know that the product of the current times the time is, is is charge. So calculate the charge is roughly about 40 nanocoulomb per every single uh, microelectrode. This size of microelectrode belongs to first generation of uh, this retinal implant, which had 520 micron in diameter. The second generation, which has a 60, 6 times 10 microelectrodes, so because of the limitations inside of the eye, so we had to decrease.
increase the size of the microelectrodes to 260 micron. However, uh, the amount of charges is still constant. And the third generation, which as we discussed, the need of that will be roughly about 1,000 electrodes. So uh, this, the size of electrode will shrink to 75 micron with the same amount of charge. And this is beyond the limits of charge transfer properties of pure platinum. And at this point, the need for a substitution of high surface robust material uh, comes crucial. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, I was my project was to uh, fabricate a platinum iridium clean film with high surface area, and this had some some specific goals. Uh, developing an uh, electroplating process, uh, improving its hardness compared to pure platinum because pure platinum is too soft. Uh, adhesion is very uh, electrical properties. I uh, was supposed to increase the charge transfer capabilities by alloying with iridium. Uh, adhesion is a very important factor because we don't want to see any type of delamination of the electroplated film. Uh, on these microelectrodes once this is once it's implanted to the patient's eye because we don't want to expand anything. It, it has to go for a lifetime. And the entire process needs to be simple, reproducible, and scalable. Uh, many, many processes uh, were investigated by myself, um, such as changing in the chemicals in the plate solution, the temperature of the solution bath, deposition bath, uh, the sublication amplitude, which I had to agitate for some uh, electrochemical purposes, the deposition potential windows, because I was supposed to uh, deposit an alloy, uh, so I couldn't use a constant potential uh, technique because uh, the, co uh, the co deposition of two elements were needed, so I had to use a proper technique for the deposition and also the position time at the constant uh, scan rate. So after all this, I ended up from a defective, cracked uh, micro uh, platinum iridium film to a uniform, non-defective uh, PTIR films with a very smooth uh, surface to, to a very high surface area. So basically, I can control uh, the structure of the surface um, by changing the chemicals and the bath temperature with a constant chemical composition of uh, 60 to 40. So I was able to electroplate up to 42% of iridium with no defect in the surface and high charge transfer uh, properties. So I started to electroplate uh, with different deposition times. I started to 4, 8, 16, and 32 minutes. And the purpose was to find the relation uh, between the deposition, uh, the film thickness and the deposition time. Uh, so as I explained, I had to use a, a technique that, rate, uh, that sweeps the voltage between two limits. This is a cyclic voltage technique. It starts from some negative number to some positive number in this case, and it goes many, many cycles and at a constant scan rate, and the deposition starts. So on the left column, we see the uh, same field as the, the, the 4, 8, 16, and 32 minutes of the deposit of film with lower magnification, uh, it's kind of survey pictures, SEM micrographs, and on the right side, we see the same uh, films with very high magnification. So none of them show any defects or any cracks uh, on the films. 